Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which is going to be focused on storing our model history and also being able to view or revert changes via the Django admin site. Now, in order to achieve this goal, we're going to utilize the Django simple history package to help us to do this. Now, before we get started, all I want you to do is ensure that you have a simple Django application. So what I mean by that is just make sure that you have a Django uh, project running. So as you can see here, I have a simple Django project that is running. The only thing I need to do, of course, is just to make my migrations. I haven't created any apps or anything. I've just gone ahead and started a normal Django project. So make sure that you have one up and running. Now, once you have it up and running, let's just um, complete the basics here. So once your Django project is up, you can just go ahead and make your migrations for the default migrations here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop my server and then we can say python manage.py migrate. So we just want to make all of those default migrations. Perfect. All right, so that's done. Let's run our server and see if everything was done fine. Okay, and there we go, we're good to go. All right, so make sure you've made all of your default migrations, which comes with the default apps that come when you install Django and set up a Django project. All right, now the next thing that we wanna do is we want to create a simple Django app, okay? Now the reason for this is because we need to create a simple uh, model in Django, so we may create one or two models per se. So what we can do then is we can go ahead and create a Django um, app. So I'm going to say Django, Dash admin start app and I'm just going to call it let's call it um, CRM as an example there we go and you just want to add in that app that you created so I called my CRM and of course you'll see here I'll have a models.py file now you can head on over to your settings.py file just make sure you configure the app that you created in settings.py so I'm just going to go to installed apps and add in the app I just created, which was CRM. Be sure to add in your comma at the end. And then all you wanna do is just go ahead and rerun your server, just to make sure that everything is connecting smoothly. Okay, there we go. Okay, server's up. Uh, refresh the page and we are good to go. Perfect, all right, so we've got that set up. Right, so I'm assuming, of course, that you have a virtual environment because, of course, when you create your Django project, you'll have a virtual environment. So as you can see here, I have mine currently active. And what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and install this Django simple history package. OK, so what you can do is you can go ahead and say pip install Django um, dash simple dash history and press enter. So let's go ahead and do just that. There we go. All right, so we've got that set. So anything that I use in this video tutorial, I will be sure like always to add a description, add a add the relevant links in the description below. So you of course can go ahead and read more about the necessary packages. Right, now we want to go through the quick start guide here. So as we can see, step one was just to install the Django Simple Light, Django Simple History package. Now we just need to add simple history to our installed apps. So let's go and do that. So we can go to settings and it doesn't matter where you add it in. You can just go ahead and add it in down below like so. Okay, great. And uh, next thing that we want to do is we are going to make use of the, the historical models, which are going to make a, they're going to track each change that we make to our models. So what we need to do is we need to add in the history request middleware to our middleware in Django settings. So you can copy that and you can add it to your middleware list. Now this can be anywhere. I'd recommend just adding it in the bottom because this is where I know it will work. So you just want to add in that middleware. Perfect. All right, we've got that set. And the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a simple model instance. All right, so as you can see here, we have an example here of two models. So we have a class poll and we have a class choice and then of course choice is linked to poll by a foreign key however this foreign key we're going to have to adjust here okay and add in the on delete option here so that means if for example a poll was created and that um, choice is linked to that poll that would mean of course that once the poll gets deleted it will only make sense for those choices associated with that poll to be deleted as well so that's the whole point here of the foreign key as we can see here, we are importing the base models um, 
class here, like normal, inheriting that to create our models. And of course, as you can see here, we have the simple history.models module. And of course, we're just importing that model historical records. All right. So what we can do is we can go ahead and add this to our models.py file as is. So if you head on over to your app, so minus CRM and models.py, you can go ahead and add everything in place there. So I'm just going to add in some space. Now, something I do want to mention, if um, for some reason some of you are struggling with understanding the concept of models, I do have a video tutorial um, available. I will also attach that in the link in the description below where you can just refresh your knowledge on utilizing Django models. Okay. So for those of you that are comfortable and understand the concept of Django models, let's get started. So we can see here we're importing the base class for models, which is already by default given to us when we create a Django app. So there's no need to have to add that in. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can import the historical records here. Okay. And you can go ahead and import that accordingly. All right. Next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create our two models. So it's going to be poll and choice. And I'm just going to actually go ahead and copy everything like so and paste it in. And let me go ahead and explain. All right. So we have our two models, poll and choice, and each, of course, model has its own unique set of attributes. So I will get to history in just a moment here. So as we can see for poll, we have question and we have pub date. So a public publication date or publish date. And these are our two attributes unique to poll. And the general idea is whenever we create a poll, what we want to do is we want to link that particular object of that poll to a choice. So as you can see here by we're creating a foreign key here. So poll is going to be seen as a foreign key in the choice model. Now this isn't going to work. Okay. You need to add in an extra parameter here under foreign key, and that's going to be as follows. So you want to say on underscore delete equals, and then you want to just say models dot cascade. And this is going to ensure that if we have a model linked to a choice that if that poll, excuse me, if we have a poll linked to a choice, if that poll were deleted, then of course it wouldn't make any sense for that choice to exist. So that choice object is also deleted. So that's the general idea behind this foreign key. We of course then have um, two unique attributes here, such as choice text and votes, which pertain to the choice model. And of course here we can see we have history, which is another attribute which pertains to historical records. And of course, as we can see here, if we read through everything here, all we're doing here is we are creating an instance of the simple history.models.historical records on our model. And this is that instance. Now by adding in this instance, you will be able to track that particular model itself all the histories behind that model and also be able to revert changes. So let's say I create a poll and that poll says, um, what is everyone's food? Okay. And I added in this instance here for historical records. Okay. What's going to happen is each time I were to create an object on this model, or if I were to change something to that object, I'll be able to keep track of it by this historical records instance. All right. Now this is going to make more sense if I actually show it to you. Okay. It might, might not make sense um, at the moment, but the important thing to keep in mind is if there is a model that you want to track, that you want to manage, that you want to revert changes to. So if you made a change to your model and you want to go back to a previous version, okay, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and import this historical records instance, and you need to add it to that particular model that you want to utilize each time. Okay. So like I said, this is also something very useful. So it can be useful in compliance and regulation. This is very similar to a, another tutorial that I did, which was on, on logging your data in Django admin. So of course it's a very similar use case in that regard. All right. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and make our migrations. So what you want to do is head on to your command prompt and you can say Python manage .py make migrations. There we go. So we've created our models. Great. And now we can say Python managed by migrate. And this is going to send those migrations to our default database. And we can see it's been sent. 
Okay, so we've got that all set. Now we need to just register these models and we also need to register it along with historical records. So what you can do is go to admin.py and since it's in the same directory, what we can do is we can just simply at the top say from dot models and then you want to import your model name, so your class name. So we have poll and we have choice. So you want to import that. So poll and choice, All right? So make sure you've imported that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to ensure that we set up our admin integration properly here. I will also attach a link to this web page as well. So you want to import the simple history admin, okay? So that is what you want to add in. And you can get it from here right in the middle, which is from simple underscore history dot admin import simple history admin. And you can add that in. Great. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to register our models and we also need to include the simple history admin so that we'll be able to go ahead and revert changes to our objects created in our model and also to manage all the changes in the model. So like normally, you can say admin dot site dot register. And you can add in the model names, for example, poll, and add in a new line that says admin.site.register. And then you can add in choice. Now, what you need to do in order to use the simple history admin, you need to just add in a comma by each in uh, each declaration here. And you can just say simple history admin. And simple history admin. Like just like so. And that will ensure that it is registered. Okay, so that's all you need to do. All right, and now we'll be able to go ahead and set up our history tracked model from the admin inf interface. So let's go ahead and continue. So once you've got that set, okay, we can go ahead and create a super user to access the Django admin panel. So you can say Python manage.py create super user. And I'm just going to set it as Arno underscore admin. Enter in a password. Okay, there we go. And you just want to run your server. Okay, it's just a moment. There we go. Um, all right, so we've got that set. Now you can head on to your admin page. All right, just be sure to enter in your credentials. So let me zoom in here. Okay, so enter in your super user credentials. All right, let's log in. All right, there we go. Okay, so as you can see now, based on the CRM app, so if we look here in our directory, so the CRM app, based on the models that we have registered, they include poll and choice, and that's what we can now see here accordingly. Right, so let's go ahead and get started. So of course, we would need to make a poll first, and we can say add poll. And here I'm just going to say, what is your favorite movie as an example of a poll you can of course say the date here so you can just click on today and you can set the time now and you can say save so this is one of the polls so what is your favorite movie and we can say save yeah and that poll was created now of course choices is a link to poll as a foreign key so you can go to choices or choice and add a choice now this is going to be based on poll object one which of course we know is based on what is your favorite movie and you can add in a choice here. So I can just say, for example, let's say James Bond as an example. And you can also set the votes here. So I'm just going to set the votes here as two as an example. Say save. Okay, there we go. So we've got one choice. Let's add in another choice. And it's going to be on poll object one. And this is going to be, say, Indiana Jones. And the votes here, we can say um, one and save. Right, there we go. So this is just a simple example of how we can just go ahead and create our um, objects here and utilize, of course, foreign keys here to ensure that if, for example, I were to delete this object. So if I click here on the left on the action, go to action and say delete selected polls and say go, you're going to see here it says poll object one, choice object one, choice object two. So that's exactly what we did here in models.py when we said, okay, I want to add in the on delete parameter here to say models.cascade. So if, for example, I were to delete this poll object, it's also going to drop down and delete any other, um, you could say, objects that are associated with the main object. So this is like the parent and, of course, these other children, you could say. All right, so let's just say no take me back. 
And I just wanted to go through that so that you're aware. Right, so now what we can do is we want to actually track the history. So what you can do is go to, for example, polls. And let's say you want to change that poll. So what you can do is you can go ahead and click on that poll object. Now this object here says, what is your favorite movie? Let's say you want to change this to something like, what is your favorite type of movie or something like that. So you can go to history. And as you can see here, we have the opportunity to go ahead and revert to a previous version of our object. We can also see who this object was changed by, the change reason, the comment here, which was it was created, the date and time that the object was created, and the particular object that we have here. So for example, we have poll object one, so we can click on that. And here you can see it says, what is your favorite movie? So let's maybe say we want to change it to film instead of movie. So we want to change the synonym. So I want to change this to film. Okay. And of course, what you can do is you can say revert and go back to poll object here. And now you can see it reverts that change for you. So it now says, what is your favorite film? So you can go ahead and go back to the history now. And you can see that you made, of course, a change to this object. So if you go to uh, poll object one here, it's showing that previous, um, you could say the previous data that was entered in for that particular field or attribute. So it said, what is your favorite movie? And we can see our latest version, which is up top here. We can even see the time change is what is your favorite film? Now, what you can also do, of course, is if you head on over to polls, so let's say you wish to create another poll and say, what is your favorite sport? can just put in those things, save. So that's the second poll. Let's create another poll. Let's say, what is um, your favorite drink? That time in, save. Now, what you can do is, of course, go to these independent objects. So let's go to poll two, history. And of course, we can see poll object two that only has one version here, which is what is your favorite sport? If I were to go back and let me change it here, okay, let me change the object here itself. And I just want to say sporting event and save it. Now, if I go to poll object two here, you can see it changed, okay? But now if I go to history and I can now see that there was a change here as well. Now, what you can of course do is the good thing here is you can change back to the previous version if you so desire. So let's say I'm currently on what is your favorite sporting event. You can go to poll object two here. And of course, you can revert back to the original one that you had. Now, of course, this might not make much sense and actually have much use if, for example, you only have two versions. But let's say you have multiple versions. So let's go ahead and change poll object two a few times. So I'm going to change it a bit. So I'm going to say, what is your favorite sporting event? And I'm going to change it and say favorite sporting event. So I'm just going to give different styles and versions here and keep on saving them. Okay, I've, I've updated it. Poll 2 again. Let's change this again. Um, uh, do you like sports? Okay, all right. And it's saving this history. All of the logs are being saved utilizing this uh, historical records uh, based on the instance of historical records that we created. And let's create one more. Okay, and save. Now, if we go to poll object two history, we can see all of those changes, each and every one. And the latest one, of course, is appearing right at the top there. And you can see all the previous versions. So it's very useful because you can roll back to a particular um, object here that you preferred based on the data of a certain field. So as we can see now, if we go to poll object two, it says fave um, uh, sporting event. And let's say we want to revert. We can go back to a particular version. So let's say history. The first thing that was said was, what is your favorite sport? Revert. Go back to poll object two and it goes back. All right, so that's it guys. That's how you can go ahead and utilize Django Simple History. Now it's a very useful package. Now, of course, there are many use cases available. Now the most common ones, like I mentioned, would be more for regulation and standards, you could say, or any type of compliance or anything like that. You can go ahead and add it in, but it's also useful 
if for example a particular object or uh, a particular instance of an object so let's say there's a user and of course they made a particular change and they want to go back to that change and there is a problem with their update with the update functionality or it's not something that, that they should be they can update um, for example often or something at least you would have the, the power as the admin to revert back okay so it's also good for logging and tracking data as well so there are many use cases for this sort of thing and i thought this is quite an interesting thing to go over so very helpful to utilize this django simple history package so you can of course as um, the package states you can of course track all of your model versions you can of course delete them revert to view them and of course add in a lot of extra functionality here all right guys i will be sure to attach a link to everything we went through here so you can go through it step by step but anyway guys that's it and i hope it was helpful to you and as always thank you for the support